welcome all of you for this uh, free training on data analytics with career guidance so in continuation with you know excel power bi sql so we are taking this uh, python programming session so this will be five day session and today is day one and i'll tell you what all things we'll be learning in today's session the first is we'll have introduction then we'll see how we can install the python software and then we'll understand about variables data types and operators so before i start the topic let me tell you one thing the programming what we are learning now the programming skills i'll make it more generic so that you don't have to bother about working on say you know c c++ vba uh, you know java or any kind of thing so i'll just try to generalize the topic so that people who wants to learn other programming language also can learn okay all right so these are the topics what i'll be discussing and these are actually the common topics common things what you should know in all the other programming languages as well all right so before i go to this python programming let me ask one simple questions to all of you just say yes or no answer okay how many of you already know programming language any programming language how many of you know programming language vandana okay she knows bba only zamir okay okay java sonia knows java okay lalita chinnamma shetty lalita okay all right others our language okay good long time rakesh saying that he has learned but it's very long time chaitra is saying she knows c++ stop all right now stop typing vinod says you know c++ navin says he knows some language fine okay so most of you knows programming language one or the other language you know okay all right so now stop typing <clears throat> i am new okay kushal no worries i just want to understand how many of you already know programming language that's all but don't worry i'll start from scratch okay i know most of them are new to this programming language so considering that i'll be starting from scratch okay now all of you stop typing concentrate here now let me open a notepad as well so that uh, whatever we discuss we can note it down here and we can post this in the app program so before going to this programming language let's understand what is a language most of the people actually think that programming language means it is just only for people who are very techies who are uh, having the more of computer knowledge and who are very brilliant it is not like that let me tell you one thing programming language can be learned by anyone okay let me clear few doubts for you language is what language is nothing but communication okay we are communicating with others so let's say i was just asking some of them that you know from which place you are some mentions i am from hyderabad i am from kerala i am from tamil nadu one fellow is saying he is from nigeria we are from various different places and we speak our own language our own mother tongue now what happens if i speak in my language which you know i speak the locally the mother tongue so what happens most of you won't understand some of you might understand because you might know my language now if i want to make you people understand i have to learn all your different different languages and then explain it is very difficult because not everyone can learn all the languages and you know in one class i cannot use all the languages as well so for this <clears throat> what we have to do is we have to speak in one common language now message me what is that one common language all of us understand and we are communicating here what is that one common language what we are using now all of you what is that common language what we are using yes everyone knows that we are speaking in english right <clears throat> okay english right okay so it is very simple that we are speaking in english so that everyone are understanding similarly suppose if i want to speak to the computer if i want my system to understand what actually i want to program what instructions i am giving 
I should learn the language what the system will understand. Okay, so that is also one of the languages. Like we learn different languages to speak with others. We're also learning one more language to speak with computers. That's all simple. Now, programming language. We learned, we understood about what is language. Now, what is programming language? Program means we are writing some instructions. The instructions which the system will understand. There are some syntax where the system will understand. We have to write the program in that syntax only. We should not, you know, do any mistakes so that we'll get some errors and the system will not understand or the program will not run. So we are writing some instructions where the system will understand that is called as programming language. There are so many different programming languages. Say what we're learning now is Python. Other than that, we have Java. Then we have the main is C, C++. Are there any other languages? You tell me, I'll type here. Message me. I have typed Python, Java, C, C++. Now you tell me R. Okay. Very good. R language, COBOL. Okay. Then Ruby. Okay. Very good. SQL. Then hold on. Okay. Okay. Then Java, I think I mentioned VBA. Very good. VBA. VB.net. There are many. JavaScript. Okay. Very good. HTML. Okay. Fine. That is also one. C sharp. Yes. HTML. C sharp. Okay, done. There are many actually. JSON. Okay, let me mention that also. Done. Okay, CSS. Fine. Power BI is not a programming language. Darshan. Power BI is not a programming language. It is a tool which is used for generating reports. Okay, so I'll discuss about that. Don't worry. And good that you at least tried. Okay, Power BI is a business intelligence tool. Okay, right. No worries, Darshan. Don't worry. Even if you're answering wrong, please don't feel bad. You're learning something new. Okay. All right, all of you. So we just listed down so many different programming language. Fine. Okay. In this, we're learning this Python. And we also mentioned so many other languages here. People understand all the programming languages will use a similar kind of, you know, um, process. So when I say data types, when I say variables, when I say syntax, syntax might slightly change, but otherwise the logics remain same. Okay. Why I'm telling all these things is most of the people actually feel that programming language is very difficult. I'll tell you programming languages are very, very easy. Okay. Only thing is you have to learn step by step. That I'll tell you. Keeping Python in mind, I'll teach you the programming language. Try to understand and work on other programming language as well by understanding the syntax of each programming language. That's all. Very simple. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, we want to learn about Python. Let's understand what this Python is, where all it can be used, why Python has become so very popular. Okay. So first we'll understand that and then we'll try to work on some simple programs. We'll see how we can install the software. Okay. So these things we'll learn. Right. So what I have done is I have some PDFs, okay, which I have, which I keep using for, uh, you know, uh, teach my students. So I'm using the same Python notes here, which I'll be sharing it with you as well. Okay. All right. Python, Python programming, All right. Python is the high level interpreted, interactive and object oriented scripting language. Now, most of them actually get confused with the scripting. What is script? Script is nothing but they are codes, the instructions. There are some application development of programming as well. Let's say we, we, we write some script, but that, that will be used in app. VB 6.0, that is application program. But if you see C, C++, Java, all these are actually scripting. We write some script and we run the program. Likewise, Python is also high-level interpreted 
interactive and object oriented scripting language when i say high level language it's nothing but it's very simple where uh, you know the instructions will be something where we can uh, write like normal english python is very easy this is one of the easiest programming languages globally okay all right now python is interpreted interactive object oriented and it is beginners language i'll send this ppt uh, sorry this uh, pdf to you so that you can go and understand and read you know thoroughly because i actually don't go with all these notes reading point by point <laughs> but i'm just telling you i'm just making you understand this so that you will understand the background of python history of python it was developed by Giovanni Rosum, okay, in the late 80s and early 90s at National Research Institute for Mathematics and Computer Science in Netherlands. Okay, now somewhere we have that when it was actually in somewhere in 1994, actually it got released first version. See, okay, so first version was released in 1994 November, but in 2000, Python 2.0 was released. Python 2.7.11 is the latest edition for Python 2. Now we have Python 3. When I made these notes, it was 3.5. Now we have 3.1.0 or 3.11. Okay, let me check that. We'll check that while install. Python is you know that Python became very popular in from 2008 because the programming language was so easy, everyone were able to. You know, most of the people were able to understand that and then um, they started implementing it. The main thing is it is freely available. It's a free source where anyone can download and they can start working on it. So that's why it's becoming very popular. Not only that, I'll tell you why it is very popular. <clears throat> Python is easy to learn. Why? Because it is like a normal English what we actually, uh, you know, speak. So the syntax are very easy and very less as well so if you see for an example there is a concept called as loops where we loop you know the instructions in vba or any other programming language there are so many different different loops but here in python we have only two loops so i'm just telling you that python is so easy that you know within you know the uh, less number of uh, syntax what we have we can do lot many advanced things right easy to read why? Because it is very clear and very easy. Uh, the instructions are, uh, you know, um, uh, written so very uh, easily in a simple English. I mean, it's something like an English language what we actually read. Easily maintain the source code, whatever is there, you know, it is very lightweight. When I say lightweight, it is like a text what we have. No, something like very big objects what we have, you know, in Excel what we store all the objects, something like that. It's not like that. So likewise, we have so many various different features which makes Python unique and um, you know um, most commonly used or say most widely used programming language. Okay, right. <clears throat> Where Python can be used? This is very important for everyone to know. Why I'm telling this is this. If you understand, then you'll know why. There are so many openings for uh, Python and you'll also know that why the industry is so much interested in people who know this Python programming. People will tell you nowadays the openings are for the data science, data analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence. So these kind of things are becoming more. The reason is they want, the company wants things to be more easier. No one wants manual work. Everything, you know, if you see, people are talking about AI. You know, most of the webinars I've seen, most of the people actually come and they keep scaring people saying that AI will, you know, um, um, uh, say, uh, take out, uh, take your jobs or say your job will be, um, you know, you'll be thrown out of the company or say you'll be fired if you don't know um, AI. Please don't get scared. Okay, please don't get scared. AI is just another advanced technology. That's it. That will not do anything for your jobs, but be prepared, understand and learn. That's why I'm telling you all this Python, uh, Power BI, Tableau, SQL. These are very commonly used applications. 
try to learn that's all make sure that you are learning this and also one more thing i'll tell you <clears throat> people if you want to prove that you know something make sure that you are um, you know attending some exams or get some certifications that is very important now previously no one used to bother you just apply one uh, uh, resume they'll call for interview done but now it's not like that most of the companies actually prefer certifications most of the companies actually prefer that some documents or some internship they should feel that you have some uh, uh, proved uh, um, skill sets okay so make sure that you actually attend a lot of uh, uh, good webinars i'm not telling you that just go and attend uh, whatever webinars you get don't do that i've seen some of the people are uh, you know who attended my um, classes they're also attending some other classes and getting certified i am very happy some of them i also have uh, mentioned i have appreciated i don't know how many of you are there here but i've appreciated that there is one person called gopi uh, he is attending i don't know whether he is there here uh, if you are there gopi you are doing a very good job i really like because he actually attended so many other uh, classes as well and yes you know <clears throat> okay bauna i will speak about the jobs later let me talk about that we'll have a session on that you already had that i'll speak about that okay let's talk about the subject Okay, so I was telling you that attend whatever possible, get the certifications, try and you know prove yourself that yes you are something unique or say something. Uh, uh, if a company is hiring you, you can uh, give most of your uh, skill sets to them. Okay, that is how you can get a job. Just by learning Python, just by learning Power BI only is not enough. You should prove them that yes I can work on this particular tool, software, programming language get certified get certifications okay see why should i actually give you a certificate you know you guys learn come here and get the skill sets but i tell you post this post this in your linkedin the reason is when someone actually sees okay why should i actually take so much of time and you know recommend you people i'm doing this so that at least from my side whatever is possible i can help you people i'm not spending anything on that i'm just spending some time that's all i'm not spending any money on that right so whatever is possible, I'm doing. So I'm telling you, there are many companies who are using this Python and more other technologies. I'll guide you on that. How actually you can apply that as well. Okay. But make sure that you are having a lot of certifications, internships or skill sets, which will help you make you feel, make the company feel that you are something unique from others. That is how the companies are looking for. Okay. All right. Let's come back to the topic where Python is commonly used or most mostly used youtube dropbox google Pura, netflix there are many companies who are actually using this python okay all right now let me tell you one more thing python is now used in almost all the domains when i say domain you take web application you take gaming you take ai you take machine learning you name anything python can be used how let me tell you. There are a few things, you know, people think that if I learn programming, then I'm master. It's not like that. You should also understand the background of it. Why Python is so popular, I'll tell you. First thing is, it is easy to learn. That we have already mentioned. And the next point I mentioned that Python is used in almost all the domains. This, now I'm mentioning. Now we'll see where all it can be, you know, used or where all it is used. Web development desktop applications scientific and numeric applications you know that uh, you know we had this rockets they launched the rocket and all they there also they use this uh, python programming artificial intelligence right software development application python applications like education you have this uh, you know most of the lms what we have now most of the lms uses this python programming python application in business Database access. We can connect to database and get the data as well. Networking, network programming. Most of the networks, you know, Selenium and all these things, you know, uh, some testing and all they're actually using. And also the networking. Say, um, I'm not so good in this networking, uh, you know, details, but uh, you have this uh, connections, intranet connections and things like that. They're also, they're using this Python. Gaming. We can see a lot of games coming up. I'm not so good in games. 
but uh, you guys would have no i know some of you are actually very good in games so you can name there are many games online games which are actually developed by using this python okay the more other applications why they use this i'll tell you this programming language okay whatever i am teaching you it is the syntax how actually we can program after that there are some libraries which you have to choose on which domain i have to go for example if you think i want to go and start working on web development then i'll be learning programming language python then what i'll do is i'll try to learn some of the libraries there are so many libraries here especially this django pyramid okay like this there are many other libraries which you'll be using along with the python programming and then develop web pages dynamic web pages right okay the next desktop application suppose if you see in vb.net or vb we create some screens some forms we use tkinter that is tk what we call it as like that we have some vx wx widgets there are many libraries along with python programming we can create you know the um, forms okay next <clears throat> we have the scipy pandas all these are different uh, libraries which will help in working on various different uh, applications like we can connect to excel we can connect to access we can connect to sql we can get the data in a various different formats and then we can work on that that i'll tell you how actually we can connect to various different uh, database and then get the data and start working on it okay software development application you can build you know you can uh, develop a bot you, nowadays you have seen many you know web pages we have that bot those things we can actually do as i mentioned lms say for example now i want to store all my videos and then give the notes i want to have a proper um you know, organized lms that is learning management system if you want to do that we can use this python okay python for business then connecting to database network programming as i mentioned gaming and 3d graphics along with that we have this robotics machine learning artificial intelligence data analysis that what we actually do okay any other application any other domain you mentioned python programming is used because for every domain there are a lot of libraries which have been developed we just have to choose which domain we are going and choose the best libraries which we can use and start working on it okay right so this is just an introduction what i've given now coming to the installation let's go here i have a pdf for installation as well so i'll just share it with you but practically i'll show you how we can actually use it how we can install it here i have, here I have given step by step for uh, installing uh, let me see like given here let me check if not i'll just tell you how you can install okay this is basic syntax fine no worries let me just tell you you just open uh, the web page and say python download enter it will take you to the website python.org click on this python is the latest version 3.11 okay you can just click on this if you just click on this it will download the software you don't have to pay for this now how these companies survive if you're not paying we can donate some of them actually donate you can donate if you think you want to donate otherwise no worries no one actually will force you okay if you think that you want to donate you can go and you can donate here okay all right now i can see that 3.12 pre-release there is a version which might come soon 
I don't know when they'll be releasing, but yes. Okay, now as of now, what we have is 3.11. We'll just use this. Okay, so download this and install. Done. Apart from this, if you download this and install, you will get a screen that is like a notepad. Okay, if you go here, I have installed Python. Let me just scroll down. And I have Python 3.9, I have an old version actually. Let me just open that. Right now, this is the Python what I mentioned. This will be like scripting mode or interactive mode where we can go here and you can uh, create a new file and then we can write the program and then we can save it, we can execute it. This we call it as IDLE. So what is IDLE? Integrated Development and Learning Environment. Okay, so here, let me just type something. Simple programming, A equals 10. Okay, now I'll say print A. Don't think that I've written some very big program. This is just to show you how Python will work. A equals 10, B equals 20. Okay, C equals A plus B. I'll say print C and see this is scripting, just writing some instructions. We have something called as you know interactive mode. Let's go here. This is scripting mode. This one. This is interactive mode. Interactive mode means. When I actually type and say enter, immediately I'll get the result. Scripting mode means, now let me go here and say A equals 10, B equals 20, C equals 10 plus, sorry, A plus B. Okay, then I'll say print C. Right? How to execute this? We need to save this. Here is this. Okay. See here, if it was in interactive mode, if I say enter, immediately I'll get this prompt. This is called as prompt. Three greater symbol. Where this will allow me to enter new instruction. Now this is scripting mode. I can write, you know, any number of lines and execute once. What is execute? I'll say run. When I say run, I can use F5. You just see if I say run, it lasts for saving the file. I'll just save somewhere. We'll just save this. Let me save this somewhere in F drive. I'll say Python tab. Okay. Or what we'll do, we'll save it in our uh, folder itself. <clears throat> People are asking questions and answer all your questions. No worries. Give me some time. Okay. All right. I'll say Python. Now, you see, you can see that I'm getting the result here. And it will show where the file has been saved as well. This is normal, ideally. Okay. <clears throat> I think I've showed you, Sonia, from scripting mode to you know, interactive mode. You can get, see, you will not get the result in scripting mode. You will get the result in the interactive mode only. Okay. But I'll tell you the better way of writing the programs. Usually, it is very rare. Okay. You know, nowadays we don't use this uh, Python. Okay. Now, this is one way of writing the program. Let me close this. Right, this is one way you can see that dot py is the file name extension. But what we actually do usually now 
we don't use this python much because it is little confusing or say difficult for beginners it is better we use anaconda okay we say anaconda here it lasts for download download it for windows this one if i click on this <clears throat> and start downloading let me click on this okay here i have this 3.11 we can just click on this it will install okay it will download and then it will install all right so what is anaconda anaconda is nothing but it is called as a navigator now what is navigator i'll tell you this anaconda will have a collection of so many other applications as well here we call it as ideally that is we saw this python similarly let me go here i've already installed anaconda okay let me go here i'll open this anaconda navigate It will take some time. So once it is downloaded, install it. It's very easy to install. You can just say next, 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 and install. Once it is done, you can open this. Once the Anaconda is opened, let me show you. <clears throat> it is loading. And the navigator will open. Yes. See. This is the navigator. You can see there are so many different applications or the IDLEs. We can see PyCharm. This is also one of the IDLE what we use for writing Python program. But commonly, we use this Jupyter Notebook. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. This is web-based interactive computing notebook environment. Edit and run readable docs while describing the data analysis. Jupyter Notebook. This is web-based interactive programming, ideally. Let me launch this. Once you have installed Anaconda, we have this Jupyter Notebook. We can launch this. <clears throat> See, this is Jupyter. Now, if you go here, I have this new click on this and I'll click on this Python 3. That is Python 3 is the version. I'll click on this Python 3. I'll get a new window where we can write the programs the entire program the class i'll be using this python uh, you know this anaconda jupyter notebook for teaching you people okay now you might ask is it necessary for you know installing this uh, anaconda if you don't want no worries you can still install your python and then you can uh, write the program there also here also both the places you can write no worries both are same but why do we use this Jupyter Notebook? The advantages, we can see all the codes here and the result also will be here only. So that is uh, one advantage which will help us to write the program as well as to check the results in the same page. Okay, right. Now, we understood about how to install. The next topic what we have is variable data type and operators. Okay. Right, so for that also, I have the PDF, which I'll be sharing it with you. I have the basic operators, and I have this variables and data types. I will explain here the data types. I will not explain in detail today. We'll go and learn about the data types tomorrow in detail. But today, we'll learn what is variable, what are operators, and then basic of data types. And complete detail of data types that I'll you I'll tell you tomorrow. Let's go to this. Yes. Okay. All right. So first, let's understand what is a variable. 
<clears throat> okay, there are a few questions. Let me answer quickly. Otherwise, you know, they'll be keep messaging. Right. So, Bhavna, this about your uh, profile and job that we can discuss later. We'll have a session on that. Rakesh is asking, uh, do we require a Jupyter notebook? Yes, it is. If you have the Jupyter notebook, it is good so that you can write the script here and then you can get the result here only. Okay. Uma is asking, sir, is this possible to run NumPy programs in Python ideally or should I install any extension for that? You can run NumPy programs in Python ideally also, but I prefer Jupyter Notebook because it is more interactive. Okay. And Sonia, I think I've answered your question. Bhavna is mentioning, okay. She's also telling the same thing about Jupyter. Can we use VS code for learning Python? Yes, you can use that as well. Okay. That is left to you. But I'll tell you the easiest thing is Jupyter. Okay. Some people use PyCharm. I don't uh, use that. I'm not telling that don't use. That is left to you, whichever you are comfortable. But I prefer this Jupyter because I feel this is very comfortable. If you feel whichever ideally is actually comfortable, please use that. Okay. I'm not mentioning anywhere that you have to use a Jupyter. You have to use PyCharm or any other idealist. There are many online idealists where you can go, you can start writing the program, you can get the results. Okay. I'm not recommending anything. Whichever you feel comfortable, please use that. But learn syntax and logics proper. Okay. All right. So now let's understand what is a variable. And then we'll also learn about how these operators, what are the different operators we have. And then we'll see what are data types. And then we can end the session for today. Because I don't want to put more things the first day itself. Because there are many people who are just learning Python properly. Okay. Right. Let's say I want to add two numbers. So print 10 plus 12. I'll run this. I'll get the result as 22. Okay. People who know programming, uh, you might find a little boring because you already know these concepts. So people who are starting programming, please try to understand this from scratch because the same concept is used in other programming language as well. All right. I'm saying print 10 plus 12. This print is nothing but this will give me the output. That is, we are getting this 22. Now, instead of this 10 and 12, what I also can do is I'll say A equals 10, B equals 12, then I'll say print A plus B. Now, if I run this, I'm getting this 22. What is the advantage of this? Here, this script or say this instruction will not change. I'll change only the values and say 20 and I'll say 22. If I run this, I'm getting this 40. So in this case, I have to go and change the command here in the print. So here I'm just changing only the values. Now, how is this possible? We have variables. So what is variable? Let me explain. Variable means it is actually a name given to the memory location where we save the value. So when I say 20, 20 is a value which is stored temporarily in the memory. Now, if you want to fetch that value, I should have some address. That address is this here. Then why it is actually called as variable instead of address? It is called as variable because this a equals 20 can be changed anytime. Now, I'll say a equals 30. And if, sorry, a equals 30. And if I use the same code here after this, we just see when I run this, the first it is 42. And then after that, this becomes 30. And this is 52 now. The value will be keep changing as and when I want, I can keep changing, say, a equals 100. And now if I run this code, see, first it is 42, then it is 52. And now the total is 122 because a was 20 here. In this case, 20 plus uh, 22, I got the result 42. Then A becomes 30 and 30 plus 22, it is 52. Then A becomes 100, 100 plus 22, it is 120. So what does that mean? The value of this particular A will be keep changing as and when I keep assigning the value. Right. Now, this A is small letter. 
Now, what if I say print A plus B? This A is different from this A. If I execute this, see, I'm getting this error. So what does this mean? I'll tell you. Python is case sensitive. So what is case sensitive? This A and this A, they are different. So keep this in mind. Whenever you are assigning the value or whenever you are writing the program, the instructions, the keywords, everything, it is case sensitive. This you should keep in mind. That's why I just wanted to explain this. I might be a little slow. People who are already having this knowledge of programming, please bear with me because there are many people who actually doesn't know anything about these concepts. So I just want to make them understand these concepts. Okay, right. So Python is case sensitive. VBA is not case sensitive. People who are working on VBA, they'll easily understand that, you know, this A and this A will be same. But for Python, this small A and capital A, both are different okay it is case sensitive now you see i'll go here i'll try to print okay let's say we'll take this code itself and say print a plus b this p is capital now you see i'll run this see it is saying print is not defined that means the function should be like this print okay even the keywords even the functions whatever we are writing everything should be case you know the proper case proper case in the sense whatever case we have here same thing it should be okay you cannot change it if you change then there is a problem you will get error okay right so variable means we understood that a equals 20 that means a is nothing but variable in a we are trying to store 20 20 is the temporary value now suddenly you know after this i gave one value as 30 now a becomes 30 in this case in this in this place in this location it becomes 100 so you can keep changing is there any rule that i have to type this as a or b or something it is left to you you can give any character but make sure that you'll use the same thing for doing the calculations done okay now we understood what is variable now if you see I mentioned a equals 20. When I say a equals 20, that means this is called as assignment operator. I'll come to that operator. Assignment operator means the value what is there in the right side can be assigned to this, in the left hand side. Usually the variable will be in the left hand side and the value will be in the right hand side. So whatever value is there in the right hand side that will be assigned here. Now if I say a equals 100, b equals 200 i'll say c equals a now this a is 100 whatever value is there in a that will be assigned to c now if i say print c and if i run this c will be 100 i'll make this as 50 and if i run this c will be 50. so this is assignment operator right now let me go here we understood about the variable, how the values are assigned, and this is called as assignment operator. Assignment operator, this is called as assignment statement. That means we are assigning the value to a variable. Right? Okay. Next, we'll understand about the operators. What are operators? Operators are nothing but the symbol what we have here, which we can use it for calculations, which we can use for, uh, uh, you know, comparison. Okay. There are various different operators. What are those? Let's say arithmetic operator. Next, logical operators. I'm just listing out and then I'll tell you how actually you can use this. Arithmetic operators, logical operators, comparison operators, then what else we have? Logical comparison <clears> token <throat> okay. first we'll work on this the main thing okay arithmetic comparison and logical we'll keep this logical later first we'll work on this arithmetic operator so you can use this hash for making it comment okay you can uh, comment this 
uh, why because this is like you know if you don't want to uh, work on something say if you don't want this to be executed you can use this hash hash will actually make the uh, you know codes say non executable statement you can call it as okay all right <clears throat> right next let me execute this so that i'll get one cell arithmetic operators arithmetic means we are trying to do the calculation say plus minus multiply divide okay let me put this here Let's say a equals 10, b equals 20. Okay. Now, let's say print a plus b plus. Plus is what? Plus is arithmetic operator. When I say plus, if I run this, see, I'm getting this 30. I'm adding these two numbers. Let's say minus. Minus is used for subtracting. Let me make it as 30. And if I run this, see? 10. Multiplication. I want to multiply. Let's go here and say multiply. Run this. See, I'm getting this 600. Division. Let's go here. We'll give some value. Say, I'll give some number like this. And I'll say divide. Let's run this. See, we are getting some value. Now, let me copy this and I'll put two slash here. Let me run this. See, I'm getting this. See, two hash, sorry, two slash. This is called as floor division. This is division. This is floor division. When I say floor division, here you can see seven. Seven is what? The integer part only. Right? Okay. Now, let me copy this. I will use percentage here. Now, what is this 7? Seven? 7 is floor division. This is nothing but the quotient. <coughs> when I say quotient, that is the last divisible, the final divisible value. Now, I'll say percentage. Now, let me run this. Now, when I say run, let me give a value like this, which is easy for us to remember. Okay. We'll make it as 18. I'll make it as 18. And here I'll say 5. Let me run this. See, the remainder is 3. What is that 3? 3 is nothing but 18 divided by 5. That means I'm getting the remainder. If I give that 18 here, 18, and I'll say 5. And if I run this, see, sorry, yeah, so 5 into 3, let me give 28, okay, see, 5 into 5, 25, the remainder is 3, here also, let me make it as 28, now if I run this, I'll get 3 as my remainder, this is for getting the quotient, that is floor division, we call it as, this is for modulus, that is, we call it as mod, where we get the remainder, All right. Next, let's say I'll add two multiplication. Then let me run this. Let me make it as two and here as three. And if I run this, two into two into two to the power of exponential, two to the power of three. Okay, so let me mention this as well here. Comma, we have double slash, floor division. We have percentage, mod operator. And then we have this double multiplication that is to the power of. This is arithmetic operators. All right. So we understood about arithmetic operators. Now let's go here. And just put one enter mark. Next, we'll say assignment operators. Assignment, assigning. This is assigning, this one equals is assignment 
the next plus equals minus equals multiplication equals division equals what is this let me tell you so now what we're actually working is assignment operators let's go here i'll say a equals 10 okay then here i'll say <clears throat> c equals a plus c now let me make it as c plus a c plus a print c now let me run this so i'm getting I think C somewhere we already have. Let me just change this to B. Run this. Sorry. 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 Let me just make this as zero first. Okay. Right. Now, let me run this. P is 10 now. Now, if I run this again, you can see it is 20. Why? Because already there is 10 in this particular P. Now it is 20. Now, I'll run this. See, 10 is getting added here. Instead of writing this P equals P plus A, I can use like this. Plus same thing we can go here and I can make it as minus so what is this I am assigning this P equals P minus A run this see now let me copy this go here and say multiplication run this see this is multiplying division okay I will go here and say P equals P divided by A So likewise, we can use this assignment operators. Right? So, next, what we have is comparison operators. What is comparison? Suppose if you want to compare the values, usually this uses use this in conditional statements. That is, you're checking some conditions. Let's say I want to compare, say equals not equals greater than greater than or equals to less than less than or equals to let's go here and say a equals 20 b equals 20 now i need to compare this i'll say print a equals b c here this single equals means it is assignment operator I'm trying to assign the value. If you want to compare, I should use this double equals. Otherwise, it is considered as equals. That means it is assigning the value. Now, if I run this, it will give me true or false answer. It is true. Let me make this as 10. And if I run this, see, it becomes false. That means you're just trying to compare whether it is equals or not. Let me copy this. Not equals to. A is not equals to B. I will execute this thing. It says true. Why? Because the condition is true here in this case. I'll make this equals. Run this. See, it is false. That means A is not equal to B. This is equals. We're trying to compare. Next. The next is greater than. If I run this, it says false because A is greater than B. In this case, it is equals. Let me make it as 30. A is greater than B. Yes, it is true. Next, if it is 20, A is greater than B. It is false. But if I say A is greater than or equals to B, then it is equals. Let me run this. See, it is true. Similarly, less than. <coughs> A is less than B. If I run this, it is false. 
Now let me go here. I'll say make it as 10. Run this. See? True. Suppose I make it equals. See? It is true. Or if it is 10, still it is true. But if it is greater than that, then it is false. So likewise, you can compare. What I'm teaching now is some basic ideas. These things can be used in your, uh, you know, um, programming. That I'll be telling you tomorrow. As I told you today, I just want the people, people who doesn't know anything, no programming skills, you just have to understand few things. That's all. Right? Okay. Next. <clears throat> the next one what we have is logical operators. So what are logical operators? Let me tell you. Logical operators are and or not. Let me make it as correct. Let's start on A equals 10. B equals 10. C equals 10. Okay. I just given same values to show you. Now I'll say print A equals B and C sorry, B equals C. See? Let me run this. I'll get true. Why? Keep in mind and operator. <coughs> when I say and operator, all the conditions, whatever I give, that has to be true. A equals B, B equals C, it is true. Let me make it one more condition. Make it 20. I'll make this 30. Or let me make this as 30, 20, and this one as 30. A is greater than B. B is greater than C. Let me run this. Yes, it is perfect. Now let me make this as 40. Now if I run this, it is false. Why? Because here I have two conditions. Both the conditions has to be true if it is AND operator. Let me copy this. Let me make it as R operator. And now if I run this, it is true. It is true because when I use this R operator, any one of the conditions, if it is true, any one of the conditions, see, let's say R, A is greater than C. In this case, this condition also is false. This is also false. Only this is true. Now, if I run this, it is still true. Let me make it as A is less than B. Then it is false. The reason is here, <clears throat> all the conditions are false. Keep in mind, AND operator means all the conditions has to be true, then we will get true value. In our operator, all the conditions, okay, if it is false, then only I will get false. If any one condition is false, then it will show me as true. Suppose if you just want to reverse, say, not, okay. Run this. See, if it is false, it will get converted to true. So, likewise, we can use these operators. But these are operators. Now, what are data types? That we'll discuss tomorrow. <clears throat> but I'll tell you what are data types. Okay, I'll just give a brief discussion about data types. Data types are nothing but what is the data? This is number. Suppose I say A equals, this is text or string. So what data I am actually working, what data I am actually using it for programming, that is called as data types. In Python, we have different kind of data types. I'll tell you, we have, let me name them, okay? We have string which is text. We have number, which is numbers. We have list, that is list of values. We have tuples, which is nothing but a read-only list, which we cannot edit. And then we have dictionary, which is nothing but a data where we have key and values. We'll work on this tomorrow. 
in detail because a lot of things to discuss on this. Okay. What I want today from all of you, okay, people who know programming, please bear with me for today. People who doesn't know programming, work on this. I'll be sending all the PDFs. I'll be putting this in the app. Okay. And all of you, please be in the WhatsApp group, the same WhatsApp group. I'll be posting all the videos. I'll be sending you the link where I'll be posting the videos, the notes, everything, so that you guys can go and check the link with the videos and also <clears throat> you can you know download the materials okay right which application okay if you are new let me just show you people who are new please go to this course <clears throat> and then go to this webinar and then here we have this python programming it says Python programming. Let's go here. <clears throat> okay, I'll just send you the link. Okay, see, I'm just putting the link here. Okay, so people who are not still registered, please go here. It is completely free. And if you go here below, you will get this WhatsApp link. Okay, just click on this link you can join the WhatsApp group link. <clears throat> Everything will be there, Karthik. See here, we have this advanced Excel. So I mentioned all the values you see. Here, if you go here, all the videos are there here. Similarly, I will add Python also. I'll have a separate, uh, you know, training here. You'll get all the value, you know, the notes. You can see that here. Similarly, you can download. Join this link, okay, all of you. Please join this link. And then we can work on this. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, people, I'll stop here because I know too much of uh, the session will be not good for people who don't know anything. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, before I close the session, how was today's session? I want all of you to mention because I'm taking so much of efforts for you people. How was today's session? I want all of you to mention. How was today's session? Good. <clears throat> Learn something new. This is one thing which I always like. Good. Good. Don't worry. Today, I just took only basic. Okay. Just basic. Just one step. But tomorrow, I'll be teaching you a lot many things. With more interesting things. Programming. Everything I'll be teaching you. I don't want anyone to miss. Okay. All right. So, people. Thank you, Sonia. Right. Right. <clears throat> All right. So I'll be posting these videos. All of you, please join the WhatsApp group there. I'll be sending all the links. And also, please join this course. If you're not able to log in, go to this itsinc.in. In this, go to courses and then free webinars. You can join. Right, all of you. Take care. <clears throat> See you guys tomorrow, 7.30. I want all of you to be there because, yes, it is up to 9.30. Today, just basic only, I just had. Okay. Yes, till Friday, you'll have daily. Okay, right, people. Thank you so much. See you guys tomorrow. Good night. Take care.